Okay, let's now talk about multiplication. And this is where Napier's brilliance shines through. Now right now, we think of the checkerboard as a whole bunch of 2-1 machines stacked row by row on top of another just fine, with the columns actually then labelled by the powers of 2, 1, 2, 4, 8, and so on. Great. But then Napier su suggested, well, if we've got the columns labelled by the powers of 2, why don't we also label the rows by the powers of 2? All right, that's interesting. And then he said, OK, put a counter anywhere you like on this particular array now, but think of its value as worth the product of its row number and its column number. So think of this as 4 times 8. This counter is now worth 4 times 8. This counter is now worth 32. Or well, if I put it over here, it'll be worth 16 times 8, whatever that is. Or if you put it over here, it'll be worth 4 times 2. If you put it here in the corner, it'd be worth just 1 times 1. So at each spot now, a counter placed in that spot is worth the product of its row and column number. All right, now have we lost the two oneness by the rows? For example, if I put two dots here, are they still worth one dot, one place to the left? Let's find out. Right now I've got two eight by fours. Two eight by fours. Is that the same as one sixteen by four? Oh well, yes, two eights by four is the same as one sixteen by four. Yes, we still have the 2-1 machine working by the rows. But also something better happens as well. So we've also now got 2-1 machines working vertically as well. Because look at this. This is 2 8 by 4s. Is that the same as 2, sorry, 1 8 by 8? 2 8 by 4s is indeed the same as 1 8 by 8. Or 2 8 by 8s is the same as 1 8 by 16. Or 2 8 by 16s is the same as 1 8 by 32. We have the 2 1 machine working vertically. Brilliant. So now we've got lots of freedom. We've got 2 1 machines working horizontally and 2 1 machines working vertically. But there's more. There's more. This is brilliant. This is fabulous. Look at this particular counter right now. It's currently worth 4 times 8. What I'm going to do is I'm going to halve the 8 and double the 4. So if I do that, half the 8 brings it one row down, double the 8 brings it one column over, and bingo. It's now 8 times 4. That's the same product. Well, if I halve this and double this, instead of 8 times 4, I'll do 16 times 2. There it is. Same value. If I halve this and double that, 16 times 2 is the same as 32 times 1. Bingo. In fact, all the dots along this diagonal are worth the same value. If that's true anywhere. This is currently 16 by 32. If I halve and double, same value. If I halve and double, same value. If I double and half, double and half, double and half, boom, 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 same value. Double and half again, one more time, boom, same value. So we now have so much freedom on this board. Not only can we do explosions where two dots explode vertically or horizontally, I can also slide dots around and not change their values. Amazing. Explosions up, explosions left, and diagonal slides. Okay, with that freedom, we now have a lot of power. Let's now do some multiplication. Let's do 19 times 5. 19 times 5. So what's 19? 19 is going to be a 16, a 2, and a 1. Now let's think about it. Okay, so 19, I can actually write it on the board as 16, 2, and 1. But now remember, I actually think of this as 16 times 1, and 2 by 1, and 1 by 1. So it really is 19 times 1. Actually, if I did it up here, I now read this as... 16 times 2, and 2 times 2, and 1 times 2. That's actually really going to be 19 times 2. That's two groups of 19. Or if I put them up here, uh, that'd be 16 times 4, and 2 times 4, and 1 times 4. That's four groups of 19. Now, I wanted 19 times 5. So what's 5? 5 is a 4 and a 1. Oh, so there's four groups of 19. So I need my one group of 19 as well, because that now makes five groups of 19. Bingo. On the board right now, those dots are worth five groups of 19. That actually is a representation of the multiplication problem 19 times 5. The trouble is I can't quite see what that value actually is. Oh, but we can slide dots diagonally and not change their values. So Napier suggested just slide the dots that are up high diagonally and not changing its value, not changing its value until it all comes down to the bottom row. Not changing the value, no value changes nothing's changed in value. So actually the value of 19 times 5 must be the value of what I see, which is just the number on the bottom row times 1. Great. And what number do I have? I have a, a 10 and 20. That's 30 right there. Uh, 30 and 64, that's 94, 95. The dots on the bottom are worth 95. Therefore, 19 times 5 must have been 95. Whoa.
Well, let's do another one. Let's do another one. Let's do, say, 6 times 7 and see if we get the answer 42. 7. So what's, that's going to be what? A 1, a 2, and a 4. So I'm going to use these three rows. And I want 6 times 7. So I want 6 times 4, 6 times 2, and 6 times 1. 6 is a 4 and a 2. All right, so 4 times 4 and a 2 times 4. Yes, that is 6 times 4. And I want 6 times 2. Bingo. 4 times 2 and 2 times 2. That's another that's 6 times 2 and 6 times 1. Bingo. That is 6, 7 times. Beautiful. There is the answer to 6 times 7. Trouble is I can't read what value that is, but if I slide the dots downwards, as I'm, I'm allowed to do, I will not change the value of the dots and all will be grand and bingo. So now I'm on the bottom 2-1 machine. I can do some explosions. Kaboom! Dot. Kapow! Dot. Gazing! Dot. Oh, is that 42? Uh, 10 and 32? 42. 6 times 7 is indeed 42. Fabulous. Now, actually, if you're clever, you can do this backwards. You can undo multiplications. That is, you can actually do division problems. For example, suppose I want to know what 95 divided by 5 was. That is, I had forgotten 5 times something equals 95. What was the something I did in the example before? Actually, I really kind of have forgotten. All right, so 95. Let me write down the number 95. That was the answer to our multiplication problem. So 95 was, what was that? Um, oh, that's, uh, well, that's too much. 96. 95. It was this, I believe. Is that right? Uh, 10, 30, yep, 30, 95. Bingo. That's right. There's the answer to my multiplication problem. Something times 5 was 95. So I'm going to do a division, work out what that something was. All right, so remember it came from 5. So I do know on the side here I'm dealing with a number 5, a 1 and a 4. So somehow these dots must have come from something times 5. That is a picture on the row number 4 and a picture on row number 1. In fact, the same picture in each row. So my challenge is somehow, can I reconstruct what picture must have been appearing on rows 1 and 4, at least the numbers 1 and 4, that are the same? Ooh, well, they're very much not the same. Well, at the very least, I could slide this dot up to at least row 4, and I've at least got it on row 4, and actually I've got matching right now. They're the same right there in that column, so maybe I won't touch those one again. Maybe I'll touch this dot here, slide it up to row 4, and now that column's the same. That looks good. Um, still things are out of whack here. Maybe I'll slide this one up. Oh, look at that. I've now got a picture on row 4 and the same picture on row 1, so I really have got something times 5. Was it this times 5? What's well, this number? It's uh, 16 to, It's 19. 19 times 4 and 19 times 1. There's a picture of 19 times 5, and it was 95 to begin with, so I've just worked that 19, uh, 95 divided by 5 must have been 19. I've just done a division problem. Now, this is a particularly nice one. Um, you can actually do more complicated ones, and you might get involved with explosions and unexplosions all around the place. But the point is, try to get a picture that's identical on a certain number of rows, the rows you know that one of the factors to be. And if you can make that work, then you can actually see the answer to a division problem by sliding the, the dots back up. Um, if there are any dots left over, then you actually know you're dealing with remainders. So you actually see remainders as well. So in the next lesson, we'll talk about that and show you how to do division problems. And you actually do other things as well. It's all grand stuff. Super. Thanks so much.